the rebirth of catastrophism has unquestionably begun. For those watching our daily program, it may already be obvious how much more rapidly the papers on the topics relevant to Earth's catastrophe cycle are coming out and how much more attention they're receiving in the larger media. We are six months past the release of our book on this topic, The Next End of the World, The Rebirth of Catastrophism, and the last six months have been an even more incredible flurry. The topics we cover in the book are now being flushed out and expanded and reanalyzed at a rate that is staggering, utterly staggering. Here, six months after our book proclaiming the field had been reborn, let me show you just what's happened since then. From the ancient stories to the astrophysics to the paleogeologic studies and the lab work showing how worlds are worked by these electric events. Here we go. Would have been really nice if these guys had just hurried about a month or two so I could get this in there alongside Billy's lab experiments. One of the most voluminous aspects of the field's rebirth is in new corings and sediments and similar analyses showing these events within both the 12,000-year cycle and the 6,000-year magnetic half-cycle. We are seeing their confirmation at various places across the globe and their varying intensity across the globe, suggesting it's never a global, unsurvivable disaster, but a harsh transition nonetheless. We are learning more about how our species was challenged but endured each of these past events, and we've seen modern technology extend these studies into deeper analyses of our ongoing situation and the secular variation of the field in general. Few people know of the new observation sites planned to monitor the field event, including one by the Indonesian government that is exactly where the magnetic pole shift has them set to meet, yet another nod to what modern observations and the last generation of catastrophists claimed as well. The most critical studies in this line of the field came with the identification of another anomalous event in the field progress back in 2015, which explains most of our scary geomagnetism videos from that year, and a confirmation of the 2017 acceleration of the field centered on the Pacific sector, above that LLSVP. Remember that last bit about the field changes tied to the regions above the large internal Earth structures for later in this video. A quick stop at Greenland, where two bombshells dropped in about a week, the first suggesting that Greenland melted off entirely in the recent geologic past, and then the second describing warm periods at half the age of the alleged oldest Greenland ice. The datings of corings must be re-envisioned entirely. Folks, that's the retrospective look at the magnetic cycle and Earth changes during past events. Now, let's head out to space. In the realm of Nova, we continue to see the standard view challenged with anomalies and extended outburst ranges, and the Nova we've been missing are starting to show up with the latest technology and in ways they never thought to look before. Dr. Sofu's first paper made the book. The follow-up discoveries were just a few weeks too late. We continue to see the micro and even nano Nova limit pushed with one at X-ray luminosity around only a strong M-class solar flare from the sun. Nobody is claiming a 10 to the 34 erg burst from our star is impossible anymore. We continue to see shockers like planets surviving supernova, let alone the smaller nova events, and we continue to be reminded of the broad array of names given to the recurring stellar outbursts. Just a reminder, this is just in the last six months since the book came out because you'd be forgiven for forgetting. We're at the whales next where we've got confirmation of their dependence on Earth's magnetic field, and that happened about the time we were learning of their distress being at record levels amidst the ongoing magnetic excursion here at Earth. We saw more on the conductivity of the deep Earth and how it should be part of the entire conductive system of the globe, part of the electromagnetic mechanism for glitching the Earth's rotation, changing the length of a day, with solar storms getting a nice nod confirming their role in the matter, especially in its interaction with the geomagnetic field. And as that field changes, so changes our speed, apparently. The fastest 28 days on record were in 2020 and were speeding up even more in 2021. Would have been really nice to have that in the book, along with the asthenosphere drag of the crust, which they thought was impossible until apparently just after the book came out. We see the difficult science of galactic mapping continue with identification of the magnetic structures of the galaxy, with a look to the side, so to speak, revealing the curve of the wave, showing we're in the southern positive sector, heading into the northern negative sector. We've seen them trace these ripples to the circumnuclear region, even way inside the galaxy, and as they confirm that the Parker spiral in the solar system extends way, way out to the outer reach, 
as the lab work and plasma physics demand. We know the same must be true for the outer reach of the galaxy as well. And we have seen a number of excellent studies on the sun's current sheet effect on Earth that can be used to understand how the sun will react so violently to the passage of the galactic sheet. Remember this one from a few months ago? A strange radio signal is expected from a star recently having undergone its ignition of disaster by the galactic sheet, as was the case with the Proxima Centauri super flare a few years ago. We expected to continue to hear about changes on the planets, and the Pluto atmospheric collapse was the last one to make the book. Neptune's storm reversal news broke a few weeks later, and is impossible without a major reversal of some major system on the planet. In terms of the ongoing event here, our ability to spot changes in new observations in Earth's upper atmospheric behavior, extreme detail about the processes of Earth's electrodynamics, is helping to better understand the data, and where they believe they previously underestimated flux values, I argue those flux values should be changing due to Earth's ongoing magnetic event. Sort of like the polar mesospheric summer echoes that are increasing. These are driven by charged dust and ice, and while they blamed a colder mesosphere on making more ice, the problem is at 90 below zero it's all frozen already, and the increase in charged particles due to Earth's weakening magnetic field is an excellent explanation, and add some extra dust coming with the galactic sheet and we've got a one-two punch explaining this perfectly. Some of the observations are less hidden from view. Numerous similar reports around the globe are all bested by the one from the Arctic, shattering records, and is on the increase, another we'd expect given that the northern polar cusp is where the solar energy prefers to enter the Earth. As we learn more about what drives the chemistry of the solar corona, we ask what signal of the galactic magnetic reversal would be present in the sun now, and within 20 days we learn that indeed the solar chemistry is changing, and at the exact time the polar mesospheric echoes increased at Earth. The primary solar chemical changes are beginning as well. Now remember that part about the geomagnetic field variation tied to the LLSVP internal structures of Earth, the solar storm Earth rotation glitch story. Here, we discover yet another confirmation that electromagnetic variations and core mantle coupling are the cause of expected changes in the length of a day, confirming the anomalous glitches tied to geomagnetic jerks and solar storms, both in the statistical analysis and explaining the mechanism. They tie the slow variation, or delay in the Pacific, to what we inferred from the first real acceleration event for the Pacific happening in 2017, again, above the LLSVP skeleton, and indeed, these are the preceding routes of the geomagnetic reversal process. Not news to you observers, just nice to see it in the journals. As more and more studies begin to point out the climatological changes associated with previous cycles were to blame for extinctions rather than human hunting, the seriousness of the situation is appreciated more by the field and the larger population. From the multitude of papers like this one on such risk in journals most people never hear about, to the story of 2021 so far, by far, which was spread around the world, acting as a beacon, warning anyone and everyone who knows we're in the middle of the next event now, and what that means for our future is the pattern change rate suggests 20 to 30 years until the climax. Folks, that was six months. Nearly every major avenue in the book confirmed or taken further down the line. The planets, nearby stars, Earth itself, and the Sun, all commanding our attention. I'd say the field has been adequately reborn, wouldn't you? Get the book at otf.cells.com, and you can consider this your postlude at T plus 180 days. I'll see you tomorrow for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.